The Inside Corner starring John Heyman. Good morning. Good morning. You're a star. You've had a busy week on Know Everything You Know and starting with Robinson Cano. Robinson Cano and the Mets parted ways. You tweeted yesterday that the Padres could be a potential landing spot. How likely is it? I don't uh, know how we're on. About 99.9% .9 oh, wow, okay. point. Uh, he's expected to sign today and be activated for the game against the Braves. So uh, he will be a Padre and they've added another a lefty bat. Wow. There, there's some history wow. here. Like he's, I, I read an athletic article, I think it was by Dennis Lynn, talking about his relationship with Tatis. Yeah, sure. I mean, Cano's been around, so he yeah. has a good relationship with a lot of the young Dominican stars. And uh, I mean, he's, you know, a very good guy for the clubhouse. Uh, and frankly, I know he only hit 195 in his 12 games with the Mets, but. Uh, let's not forget, and most people do, he had 406 in winter ball, 360 in spring training. Uh, he does have those swings that look bad sometimes. I've been watching him from the beginning when he came up with the Yankees. He looks bad on some swings that's been going on forever. So, I, you know, I wouldn't read too much into it. I get it with the Mets. They wanted to move on. Uh, no harm, no foul for them. They can afford it. Uh, but for the Padres, I think it may help them. We'll see. At, at the start, it'll probably be a lefty bat off the bench, but um, you know, Void is only hitting yeah, 180 at this point. Ha Sung Kim, Cronenworth, they yeah, haven't... he can play some second. He'll probably be a lot of doing a lot of DHing and pinch hitting. I hear you talk about mix in the clubhouse over the years. I mean, Snell and Hosmer and Boyd and Cano and Tatis, I think they he, got a lot of. I think he comes in seamlessly. Water. Okay. Yeah. Earlier in the week, JP Morosi made the suggestion that the Red Sox and Xander Bogarts might not be long for each other. I can already sense his energy. <laughs> Because we're trying. Yeah, I don't like this at all. He doesn't like this at all. What? Well, they tried to work out a deal, right? Yes. Well, they offered him an extra year for okay. about $30 million. So it would have given him four years for $90 million. But he saw what those free agent shortstops got on the open market who are stars. And he obviously is a major, major star, a multiple uh, Silver Slugger winner, a multiple uh, World Series winner, obviously one of the best hitting shortstops in the game. So. To have four years, 90 million, that clearly was not going to do it. Um, you know, he's probably looking at 200 million plus as a free agent, so he will opt out. So we're talking he's got a half year left. If they're not in the race, it is possible that they trade him. I, yeah, I understand the resistance to it, but uh, I would say he, JD Martinez, and Nate Evaldi would be the three guys who are potentially free agents. In his case, it will surely be a free agent, all of them will be, um, who could be on the block. He's everything you dream of drafting, signing, yes. developing, character, uh, flair for the dramatic, Playing not, not phased by the big moment, shows up every day. If later in his career, give him an extension. If later yeah. in the career you want to move him to third base and we figure out Devers maybe moving to first, or I don't even know what they're going to back up the Brinks truck for Devers, hope so too. But you can't let him go. And to believe that Trevor Story can just go over to shortstop based on what we've seen second. the last year and a half, there, there's no way. You mean go from second back he to shortstop? Like there's something, something's but, up. But maybe that's because of the move to second, and maybe back to shortstop would change it, no? You, you he's always throwing, talk about. He's throwing funky for me. We could sit here, and, and he'll never come out and say it. Maybe one day he will, but he has looked funky. You have talked for a about year and a half now. at shortstop, your body and your momentum is going towards first base, right? It's a different, right? Or is yeah. it throw a throw? Then when you're at second, you're going lateral. Is it different? Oh, it's a comp it's different. But if you can throw, you can throw. It looks like Trevor's kind of there's something in the giddy up there that's kind of bugging them a little bit. Yeah, this is going to be difficult for them. I mean, the Mookie Betts trade, they're still, you know, getting hammered over that. I love that. You know, Sanders. to then to, don't, to have Bogerts go, yeah. it will be difficult in terms of public relations because, mm. I mean, Bogerts is, as Kipiro said, But uh, you're going to bring over, like, I, I'm reading this stuff, like, St. Louis Cardinals need a shortstop with DeYoung and Sosa Demba. Okay, and oh, maybe we can get the Nolan Gorman kid back who's tearing apart AAA, but where's he playing? We don't know if he's a second baseman. He's certainly not playing third base in Boston. You got Devers there. So it's like, I don't like trading Dan. Okay. I don't right. like it. Okay. It's like, but I don't like Freddie Freeman, and I got to get used to that. You're not used to it yet, though.
I'm not. I'm it's never going to get used to that. Take a year. If you don't think it's had a lingering effect on the Braves a little bit, you're crazy. No, I would agree with that. Um, Cubs. I guess it's easier at this point in the season when you're defined, right? When you know what you're going to do. It's not always the case. But for the Cubs right now, as it stands, what's their future? What's their path forward? Well, I mean, they're still going to obviously keep trying, but we'll see what happens when it gets to July. I mean, it potentially could be a team that makes trades. I know we've speculated on Wilson Contreras quite a long time now. Um, you know, they were not able to get a deal done with him when they tried a few years back. They did not make a big try, made a small try several years ago. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of teams that could use a catcher. I mean, you know, at this point, we don't think the Yankees need anything the way they're playing. But, you know, there are teams that are not getting big offense from certain positions, catcher being one of them. You know, potentially the Mets. There, there are other teams out there that could use Wilson Contreras. And Marcus Stroman obviously had signed that free agent deal, um, a, sh a short deal with an opt-out. Um, you know, obviously a very good pitcher, and uh, that's the kind of player that people like at the deadline. So I could see them moving those two players. And you? Yes? Yeah, Wilson Contreras is tearing the cover off the ball this year. But don't, like you mentioned the Yankees, aren't the defensive catchers working wonders for the staff like doesn't that appear in a different yeah, way? yeah I mean absolutely but unless they're going to give Wilson some big extension there where it makes a ton of sense for him yeah. to stay and be a part of the rebuild and the, and, and the remake of, of the Chicago Cubs then I think he's a guy who could bring them back a, a nice haul 